Okay, Bino Black here, folks, and I'm not sure if I missed it or if the idea that we're still waiting for it to come by. Uh, it is 8.42 p.m. Central Standard Time here. I do believe that it has passed by and that the idea that it was straight flat line like this and the idea that it will be up by the moon at 7.13 UTC Zulu time. This is a live shot from Prescott, Arizona. I'm not sure, like I say, that if we are waiting for it to come by the screen or if it has. I will go to a recently released video, five times overlap by NASA Jet Propulsion. Uh, there you go for the bubble of strangeness that they're going to show you next from the SLU network. As you can see the address up here. Uh, I want to thank them if they did let anybody see it tonight. I just missed it. I was working on a video that basically I trashed to make this video. Uh, I can always make that stuff later, and I'm really mad at myself that I wasn't looking at it live here. And I don't know if we did get it live from SLU or if you had to buy into them. But at least the idea that if you want to pay $19.95, they got a bunch of satellites, and you can see just about anything that they can get their hands on to by giving them a certain amount of money. So check them out. It uh, looks like they kind of said it's such a big event that they kind of used it for an advertisement to let everybody look. Uh, I really do kind of believe that, that this is already by. Now, we'll be able to get this from the network by looking at it. Uh, it should show on the government NASA stuff, close close go-bys. So, I'll try to pull that down. Maybe we'll get lucky at the end of this video and it'll be in there. So, it's a six-frame overlap, folks. So, here we go. Six frame overlap, Goldstone Solar System Radar on November 7th, 2011, 860,000 miles out, took this shot, okay? Now keep in mind that uh, it is going to be sometime under 200,000 miles or a little bit over 200,000 miles away uh when it goes by Earth, and uh, it's going to be somewhere around 160,000 miles or something like that when it goes by the moon, or if it hits. Now, the one thing to remember, folks, and I'll play it back, you just have to remember, folks, that there's a damn good possibility that NASA and all the astronomers out there know that this actually, through history, has hit the moon before, okay? So... I'm figuring odds are that it'll miss this time. But the way that everybody's acting, it's a good possibility that it might hit, bounce, roll off of it, do whatever it's done in the past. Now, does it hit the moon and bounce back and hit the Gulf of Mexico like in the past? Or any other portion of the United States that we have a big crater? But everybody that's most of these big craters always says that the idea, well, we figure the one in the Gulf of Mexico more than likely is still just probably a crater from an, a volcano that blew up years and years and years ago. So we'll find out. Plays pretty fast. We'll just let it go through one more time because we're only sitting at like three minutes. And I'll go ahead and throw you the constellation charts that you can look at tonight. We took this of six different camera overlap. So basically this is a six frame movie folks overlapped over top of each other just to play in the movement so that it looks like what it's going live. Six frames from Gold Star. So basically when it gets to the moon it's supposed to go on the outside as far as all the jet propulsion shows us. So when we're sitting here at the sun, this is the earth, it's going to be nighttime here. Anybody on this side should be able to see it. In North America we're pretty much in the middle of the night. 1 a.m. we'll be able to have a damn good view we'll either pulling away, hitting it, or something. So it's a damn good night to watch the moon, folks. It's cold out. Uh, 1 13 a.m., because I believe that is correct, with six hours minus off from the 7 13 UTC Greenwich. That would be 7 13 Zulu, also, folks. So you should be able to see it. I mean, if it either comes this direction or if it comes this direction, I'm not even positive sure. By this time, you think I would post me no, but I, I haven't been that crazed about it. I just keep track of a lot of stuff and more of looking at the sun and the baby blue planet, which basically we have nailed it to the ground as of tonight. Uh, I'll have another video in a little bit. Uh, we've got a guy in Arizona that picked it up.
and it's pretty much just everything we've seen in the first of the year so you'll see some sun stuff on another video tonight of us pretty much showing you the baby blue planet live on the ground from or basically it was filmed live on the ground in Arizona so we're 8 49 p.m. on the 8th so that 713 UTC Zulu is coming up and this is sky chart North America folks so the idea that you'll see the moon in the eastern sky towards the south and it, the moon will follow this direction so if you're anywhere from I would say a good two-thirds of North America west coast might have a hard time seeing it because it'll drop but then they'll if you're in the west coast you're gonna want to look down to the south okay so if you get a high, real high view spot so you can look to the south and look at the moon and since the moon's sitting here and it's supposed to be on the outside it's going to either be coming from the north or the south and it's going to either hit it miss it on the outside so it's going to be vice versa north or northeast basically north or south and the idea this is the way the moon will keep going we know that so there's your sky and all your constellations and stuff like that that you're used to looking at and so forth and so on. And if you know them, then you know them. I don't really know them. I don't see uh, Rigel and Betagulus and stuff like that right now. So those are the ones I'm looking at. I think this is Pisces here. Or this is Pisces. One of these is Pisces because I was showing the circular before with the idea the moon's going to be over it when it comes around. So some, something around here is Pisces. So once again, we're sitting here at... Uh, on the 9th shows the closer IU and that's what I saw earlier this month and kind of mentioned I think to some people the idea that when we we're in the talk group so that's not the moon we're talking about so the idea tonight you know it wasn't today that we get to the 22 their diagram shows that and then they have it at just one and we know it's been from condition so the idea that it's farther out at 79 IU on today's date and this is pretty much what I saw earlier this month a couple of weeks ago so the idea that they got more comfortable somewhere and the idea that, that now that we have that as a earth moid so that's as close as it could possibly ever get to the earth folks that's what earth moid means so the idea that it's going to be 22 tomorrow and the worst that they figured that it could get it would be that close that earth moid that I just showed you that zero one eight, and I'll, I'll crunch that real fast and give it back to you but this is what I was seeing before and then the idea that it flops back out but now it's a very big high up and down flop so around 1 a 1 a.m. 1 13 a.m. that would be the 7 13 UTC that they say on the 9th that it should be close to the moon going by the moon so you should be able to go out tonight with a clear sky up here in North America where I'm seeing it at and the idea we should be able to see it so there's that all you crunch 96,638 miles so that's even less than what we've seen for the idea that they had figured it would but that's the, the absolute close so unless it takes a big bump up and down like it does that's the one thing is it's always kind of been known just like there's another one that's called a jumper that was found in 1939 or 1949 or 47 or something like that. And that's one that they really keep a close eye on. And I really kind of wonder if for some reason that this might possibly be the same daggone one. But we're going to end up finding up over time. So they say they just found this not too long ago, you know. So that's how close it could possibly absolutely the closest it could get hitting the moon we'll see like I say I'm working on a chart but the idea of the earth right there Sun moon it should come up on the outside so either from the south or from the north I haven't paid attention many people knowing exactly how that's gonna happen but all those JPLs we've looked at all the time there should be a flat table the idea that it should be coming up on the outside here, coming they always should so, show us so much straight across. So the idea that it should be coming out from the south east, so it should be coming shoop, shoop, like that. The idea that you should even be able to see it when it misses the moon. 
i.e. because it's dark here. This is the dark side. Well, this is in North America is in the dark tonight. There, and that is the right ascension time and everything. And that is at the time of tonight, because that's what I champed it in at. Okay, so when you see Mars in the eastern sky, you better start looking for it, be up by the moon. Because that's pretty much right here. I go to 1.13 a.m. Central Time, which is six hours back, which would give you your 7.13 a.m. on November the 9th. So this is even better than what I had before. So, so there's your time. And what's going on with the moon? Rise and fall of it. 6.48 a.m. And... Here's some shot of Alaska and the sun today. This is blown up 400%. I mean, the sun was really farting its ass off today, too. As you'll see here, I'll go to the other. I think this is, yeah, this is two. I'll go to three. And I think the uh, three, and there you go. There's that. It sure pretty much looks like our uh, baby planet out there in front of the sun, folks. There's the baby planet. Sure the hell looks like it. Let me blow that up. And so you can see when I zoom in, there's the sun there. And I'll just keep zooming into it. There's a thousand percent, so that pretty much looks like it. out in front of the sun. And then it could be an object behind the sun too. But let's go to three. I got three lined up right off the get go because we got what looks like what we've seen there, a flopper. And we also got that same right here. And there's lots of them out there. Okay, V floppers. All right, and then the idea that we're going to zoom in on this some more. So there you go. That's a thousand percent up to the right of the sun. And this stuff sure the hell looks like it's out in front of the sun. Or it's way up on the right of it. I mean, anything that's got tails like that, somebody's got to be saying something about that. So whether that's alanin or... Who knows, but there's a tail on that action. That something's moving out up there. Is that YU-55? But it looks way too big. So that, to me, it looks like it could be Allen and caught on that. And the sun is farting its ass off today. As you can see this here, blowing out that side. And there's this here action down there. This is a thousand percent on Lasco 3. We'll just keep going through it. We'll pan right straight up through it. So the idea that if you want to freeze these, big old burst of the sun there on that side, and as you can see, the other sides basically towards Earth are basically flaring too. It looks like. I'm going to show you the time. So. I'll go to these real fast to see if we see anything new. I'll go to Alaska 2 and 3. And we'll see if we got anything new. Like I say, that's pretty wild there. I mean, that's big. There's a V out there. Nibiru. Who knows? That's to the right hand side. And this is supposed to be behind the sun. Lasco 3. So you can check out Lasco 3, the data I just gave you. Check that out. It looks like that big object we see behind the sun, too. So. That's a big ass object there, too. Alright. So here's Lasco 2 real fast. Since everybody else is looking at the moon, we'll be looking at the sun. Maybe we catch something. You can zoom that in. Take a look at that. Let me get the other one. So here we go real fast. We got some comments down there. 
check it out. Nibiru in the comments. Not for positive on Nibiru, but that's something.